The GameStation Pro is one of the newest retro gaming systems out on the market right now, but is it secretly the best retro gaming emulator that we've seen in a while? I don't know. Hello and welcome back to Gears and Tech. So I know the intro was maybe a little bit misleading, but we're gonna talk about all of the great options that the GameStation Pro offers to retro gamers, especially in the way of emulation. Now in a previous video, we did an unboxing of this and at the end of that video, I determined that this sucks and that the best scenario would be if someone hacks it and makes it so that we can play all of our retro game collection on it instead of just Atari games. Well, it turns out that My Arcade, the company behind making the GameStation Pro, thought of that already. You see, on the side of this system right here, there is a micro SD card slot. And it turns out, if you put games onto a micro SD and stick it into here, you unlock the option to play certain retro consoles direct off of this device. Now, this is not a tutorial on how to run emulation on the Atari. There's other videos that show you how to do that. And quite frankly, it's time consuming to do that. And I just don't feel like doing it. You're gonna understand why when we get to the end of this video. But let's talk about all of the great things that you can do with this Atari Gamer Station Pro. Before we get too far into this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel down below. If you've seen some of our content already and have not subscribed, we want you to join our community. Smash that like button, hit subscribe, and let's get back to the video. First off, this has a HDMI output. So all of your games are going to go straight through HDMI to all of your TVs. Now, there is no other output on here. So it's HDMI only. That puts your sound and your video out to whatever TV that has HDMI. It's also powered by a USB-C cord. So you can plug this into just about anything and power it up. In my case, I plugged it into a brick and powered it for the uh, review. The form factor is quite small. It is stylish. It has attractive RGB rainbow lighting and you get the multi-function controller. But there's a other secret here that's really unlocked under the surface and that's what we want to talk about. So we already talked about the micro SD card slot. Now, game systems that are currently supported on the Atari Game Station Pro, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, TurboGrafx-16, Sega Genesis. Those ones are for sure, for sure confirmed. Now there's special formats that your ROMs need to be in on that memory card, but it will play them direct natively, no hack required. Now, the next part that you're gonna say is, well, this controller sucks for playing any of those game systems except for Atari, and you would be right. But you'll notice in the front here, there's two more USB-C ports. Now those are actually controller ports that you can wire your controller that came with this. This controller wires up. Now it does work wirelessly as well, but it can work wired. Now, because we have a USB-C connection, we can actually use our Xbox controller with this system and most of the buttons are enabled. So you've got your full joystick control, you have all of your face buttons, you have all of your trigger buttons, and if you've got a pro controller like I do, you can map these buttons to face buttons and they would still work as well. So you can run emulation and you have all the buttons you need for your emulation. So obviously this is a great option for all of our emulation needs in one cute, tiny little package. We already get the Atari retro experience using a somewhat retro controller. We get a small form factor and we unlock the ability to support other controllers to fully support our emulation needs. But that's where it all ends. And those of you who have this system already and love it, you might want to turn the video off right now because it's, it's about to get messy. Now that they're gone, let's talk about some of the downsides because there's a lot. There's actually 
a lot. So we talked about the micro SD port here and you can put games on there, but the games are only supported on the root of the SD card. There is no folder support and the UI is very clunky. It is so clunky, in fact, that there's no great way to actually go through the games and sort in any way at all. They seem to sort alphabetically, but also in batches. So when you loaded it, it kind of gets an alphabetical of when it was loaded in the last batch based on the timestamps. And it just does a page method. So once you've got them loaded, if you have 10,000 ROMs, for example, you're gonna end up with thousands of pages of ROMs. Plus you can't sort by system. So you can't say, I feel like playing my NES today and then go to your Nintendo emulator and then pick the ROM that you wanna play. No, they get mixed in with every other ROM. So one of the workarounds is to add a title to the front of all of your ROMs that say NES or TurboGrafx-16 or Genesis or MAME if you're using like a arcade emulator so that you at least know the system that the game is from but then all you get is the title of the game. You don't get a thumbnail, you don't get a preview of what the game is, so you really gotta know the game you're looking for. This is a major, major strike for me. Also, you're navigating the menu line by line or page by page. If you have thousands of pages, it's still thousands of clicks through, thousands of lines to read to find the one you're looking for. The better approach is to put only the ROMs that you actually want to play on the memory stick. One workaround that I have heard is have a different memory card for each of the systems. So, for example, your favorite Nintendo games are on one memory card, your favorite Genesis games on another memory card, and then you could just swap out the memory card for the one that you want. Now, for me, that seems a little bit more clunky than what I would like. That's the major downside. Secondary downside is this controller does suck. Uh, it's got tons of lag, and even playing your Atari emulation, you can feel the lag. What I don't know is if the lag is controller input lag or if it's emulation lag. You see, the Atari is running emulation as well, and that's why it supports all of the other emulated ROMs as well, because they just didn't strip that functionality. They could potentially strip the functionality in a future update, or they could enhance the functionality and fully embrace kind of the nature of this as an emulation machine. Now, you already heard me say the controller downside isn't a big downside because we can throw our Xbox controller on there which is great news for those of you who have an Xbox. If you're like me and you have a PlayStation 5 and that's what you play all the time, well, bad news, the PlayStation 5 controller does not work with the GameStation Pro. You can plug it in, but it doesn't get recognized and it does not accept any of the user input. And a lot of users have been testing a lot of different controllers and it's so hit and miss. You can't just say an Xbox controller works, so all Xbox controllers work. No, no, no. Certain Xbox controllers work and certain Xbox controllers don't work. So if you were looking for an emulation controller option, you're not gonna know for sure. We're gonna have to create a database with a list that says these ones work, these ones don't. For now, the PlayStation controller does not work. Xbox Elite controller does work. So that's a good starting point, but what if you have a Switch controller? Does it work? Well, I don't know because I didn't try a Switch controller. What if you wanted to use a Wiimote on here? Some guys have said, I think I can get my Wiimote working. Maybe you can, but we don't know. So controller support sucks. Now add the limitations of the chip that is on this. What chip is actually inside here? Well, I don't know. I know that the highest emulation level that I've heard of guys successfully running on here potentially N64, which could be a good thing, but not any higher. So if you can emulate N64, what's the difference between this and just one of the mini Super Nintendos? Because that can do all of that too. And for me, that's where I'm gonna lead you guys to. So this, as an emulation machine, is not worth it in its current form. Future updates and future community developments may help make this into something better than what it is right now but right now there's just not enough support for it and it's too clunky the controller support is too lacking and the price is too high 
you can, I mean, it's cheap. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong at all. It is very cheap. And if Atari is your thing, and you've been looking for Atari to get into your retro gaming system, this might be the exact console that you're looking for. For me, I've actually boxed this all up to send back where I bought it from. And then I was like, well, maybe I should look if you can actually emulate this. And so I looked at the emulation, I got really excited. And then I started seeing the downsides and then I was less excited than I was. And that's where we are at in this video. Hopefully you guys got super excited and now maybe you've got a little dose of reality. This is not the emulation system that you're looking for. And to answer the question at the beginning, even though it supports it, it really kind of sucks at it and I wouldn't recommend it. Let me know if I missed anything though. Put a comment down below. Tell me what you guys think. Is it getting better? Maybe you're watching this video in a couple months and maybe it's gotten better and it's totally changed and now I need to look at this again. Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say about it. Hey, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. We hope you enjoy the content in this video and we'd love to have you come back. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel, channel, consider joining our members group. That's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community, where we can all enjoy content together. You'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. You can check out some of our other content right over here, where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.